Greg, we're just on a little ski trip. And uh, this trip isn't a very wild trip. We're at the game farm here in the White Horse. And uh, that's Millie the Moose. And her young suitor. You can see she has to drop one antler, but not the other. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our little kit here that we bring with us. And uh, sometimes we go out into wilder country than this, so I always bring this thing, which is called the Bothy Bag, which I'm going to take out in a second. A uh, little container. They're made out of Naga hide to take our cork and different waxes. So we got waxes here all the way from polar wax to wax that gets us up to about plus, uh, plus three. I don't have clisters because we don't usually need them. And a, a little, uh, like the metal scraper, especially when the wax is a bit colder. You got to have that. I've got a bigger kit that I take when we go a little wilder, which has uh, ski tips and some other stuff. But you need to have your waxes when you go out. Today we started, it was fairly cold. And now it's so hot you can hardly uh, stand it. And the problem with uh, the Yukon is that you never know what you're going to get. So uh, I'll put that back later. So this is the Bothy bag. The Bothy bag is a great piece of equipment because uh, it's very easy to, tra to travel. And uh, if you got caught out in some, some bad weather, all you have to do is, and this will fit four people, believe it or not, all you have to do is put it over yourself. And you're out of the wind. So, if you got caught in a storm, that's uh, pretty handy. And it just goes back out into the uh, into its bag, and I'll fill that up later. The other thing, of course, you always have some sort of a knife. There's a fire flint on one side and a sharpener on the other. Might as well show you the rest of this, too. So in this little pocket, I've got a, another way of starting a fire, other than the striker. And a first aid kit, which is in that Naltoids can, which has all different stuff. My son right now has a mole problem so we can fix him up a little bit so you always have something like that. I also bring, find a really good way when you're bald to regulate temperature is your hat system. I can go from no hat to a light hat to a heavy hat and that takes you through a surprising 10 degree range of heat because this is like a great radiator if you let it free or of course it, it keeps the heat if you don't. Uh, and also for, often we take water, for short trips I'm often taking a little thing of tea because it's comfort food. So here's a little mini thermos from Primus which fits in here which I just love. And that's a 0.35 liter or 12 ounce thermos. Just enough for a short day trip. Thanks. Hey, Millie. Millie over here. Hey, Millie. 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 Thanks for the video, Millie. So here we are with our little first aid kit, which has a, a bullion cube in case we got stuck, some water bags, a little thing of polysporins that we have. And some alcohol wipes and a little scalpel knife that I made. Some alcohol wipes and uh, Tylenol and tweezers and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to put a, a bit of here with the foot so we're going to put an extra band-aid on and try to get home so it's always nice to have a little kit even if it's a placebo it's a good thing thanks so going on a longer trip uh, this weekend we might do an overnight but if we're just going on a long day trip uh, we take the same material that you saw this morning this little bag you saw got all the waxes and cork take it. would take uh, probably pot this as a survival kit with some uh, cups and a bigger knife for uh, hydration. If you had it overnight, uh, that would keep you hydrated. Would bring more water. This time an Elgin bottle and a cozy. Would still bring the uh, Bothy bag. Uh, in this case, instead of just using it for a quick shelter, you could bring it up for an, for an overnight shelter because that's waterproof. So you can use it as your roof for you. Or your, or your floor on a maid shelter. Would also bring some more repair work. Would bring the Leatherman Crunch, that's our locking tool, a great tool. Would bring some spare bindings. We use three pins still, if you can believe it. 
And sometimes the thing that can absolutely cripple you is if you break your ski tip. You, know, you can no longer ski without a ski tip. You need that uplift. So these are hard to find now, but there's a there's a plastic ski tip that has a little uh, thing here. If you just put it in, it'll go in, but it won't come out. And that's for a small ski. Bring one for a large ski. Uh, and also a little Altoids tin full of a drill bit to re-drill um, if you needed to completely re-drill your uh, binding holes. Uh, lots of different assorted screws. Uh, some little pieces of wood. If you wanted to use the same, if you wanted to use the same holes, you could dr drive that wood into your uh, into your old holes, or you could drill new holes. If you're drilling new, new holes, it's really really handy to have a little bit of steel wool in there to plug in. So all of that is in there, and uh, a few other things like your ever popular um, duct tape. There's some electrical tape here. Probably only bring the duct tape and little pieces of rope for uh, uh, all sorts of things. So some wire as well. I've got some copper wire right there. So that is the difference between a long trip and a short trip for skiing. Just a few things. If you're 10 kilometers out, you don't want to walk back through deep snow. The tips are fantastic. Some extra bindings and the material to put the bindings on. And you're, you're done. Bought for hydration. Thank you.